Welcome back to Roast My Runner, where people submit their Toyota 4Runners to me, I share my opinion, the good, the bad, I rate them out of 10. Let's get into it. Okay, the first 4Runner that we have to take a look at here is from Aldrin. Aldrin's got themselves a monster truck here, it looks like. We got a huge lift kit on this thing, and it's no surprise that there's still the factory steps on here because you're gonna need them to climb up into this bad boy, holy smokes. Oh boy, we're off to a great start here, folks. We got the American flag on the side window, my favorite. Anyways, let's get into some of the details on this. We've got some Total Chaos upper control arms and some Rad Flow coilovers, which are cool. I think you don't hear a whole lot of people running Rad Flow coilovers anymore. These must be an older pair. I don't think they're super popular these days, but Looks like we've also got some aftermarket knuckles here. I think that is an aftermarket one. And that's probably where all that extra lift is coming from. We've got some Total Chaos lower control arms as well, rounding out the beefy suspension setup on this thing. And those CV angles, they, they look a little unhappy to me. I don't know. Looks like it's on a set of Method NV wheels. And I believe these are 315 Nitto Terra Grapplers. Looks like we've got some kind of a tuner module on here hike it high performance controllers i don't i'm assuming that's gonna just adjust the air fuel ratio and maybe advanced timing or something like that i don't know these foreigners aren't really known for having kind of aftermarket tuners put on them like that yeah i'm kind of curious about what's going on with this module and what kind of gains you can see from something like that looks like a 50-ish inch dual row light bar up top and uh, we've got the redneck mounts that drill into the inside of the door frame. Not a fan of those. I, I would much rather mount a light like this to an aftermarket roof rack if you're going to put a light up there. But in his defense, I can understand that those brackets are probably like $1,100 cheaper than a roof rack, so I get it. Hey, we got some stickers. All right. Yeah, whatever. Here we've got some aftermarket headers on this thing. I'm assuming those are some Doug Thorley. It looks like some short tubes. And we've got the header wrap installed on this too. Looks like a, is it a, yeah, it looks like a Magnaflow exhaust, I guess, with a twin tip. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a seven out of 10, I think. All right, up next, we've got Dylan, who also goes by the name Loose Axles, if you're familiar with him. This is his black fourth gen. He's a fellow Canadian out in Alberta. And if you didn't know that, He's got a sticker on his door to let you know that he's Canadian. Dylan's build is really nice. Uh, he's, he puts a lot of thought into what he does with his 4Runner, that everything is done with a purpose. I believe this is a homemade front bumper that he had welded up. It's kind of a mixture of like a pre-runner tubular style with sort of a, a plated in front part here with, I didn't know that he had a, a winch mounted this, but I guess he's got a winch now. Yeah, it's aggressive. It, it's gonna provide a lot of protection and it also does give you that just came from the jungle look if that's what you're going for for your 4Runner. I think the most noteworthy thing on this 4Runner is the big 35 that he's got on here. Um, and he's got them mounted to a set of white KMC five spoke wheels, which I think that's gonna be kind of a love it or hate it move. I think being an otherwise all black 4Runner, you can kind of get away with doing something a little bit risky with a, a bright color on the wheels, but white wheels on an off-road vehicle, man, it's gonna be a lot of upkeep in terms of keeping them clean. I would definitely be ceramic coating those wheels if I were you, Dylan, but uh, ah, whatever, you know what you're doing. You, <laughs> you don't need me to tell you what to do. I believe he's running Dobinson's suspension now. He's upgraded, he used to have the same Fox 2.0 setup that I had on mine. I think this is all vivid lumen lighting, I think, up front that he's got here. He's got some ditch lights, and then he's got a few kind of driving lights, fog lights built into his bumper here as well. Uh, fellow Sherpa roof rack enthusiast here, but he's gone ahead with the typical, I can't remember the name of it, the brand, is it Extreme LED or something? But these light bars that Sherpa sells with their racks that have uh, the clear center lights and then amber on the sides, so you can run them individually, like separately or all together. And I love that idea. I think his uh, topographical camo or whatever he's got on here, it's cool too, it's another, cool way to uh, add a little bit of character to an otherwise sort of like all black vehicle. I think he's running Falcon tires on here and I don't know what it is. It's something that's just strange to me. I think with a sort of like a less aggressive AT tire tread design mixed with a big size, like a 35, like what he's running. Nothing necessarily wrong with it. It's just like the smooth sidewall combined with a huge size tire almost makes it look like a toy truck, like a, like a dinky car or something, but I think it's kind of cool, I guess. Another front shot. Dylan, does your 4Runner have a rear end or are you like self-conscious about it? Like, 
Does your forerunner need to do more hip thrusts in the gym? So he's got some aftermarket headlights. At first glance, it looked like they were just the OEM ones painted black, but these are the aftermarket ones. I can't remember the brand, but again, we got another matching Canadian flag on the passenger door as well. Like, listen, okay, you don't have to tell people you're Canadian. First of all, you're from Alberta. You're more Texan than you are Canadian anyways in the first place. <laughs> Sorry guys, I gotta give him a hard time. I'm gonna give him a shout out to his content later on. So he has to earn it. We gotta make him earn it. Another front shot looks like he's got a matching Christmas tree to match the LED halos in his headlights. I noticed since it's all front shots, we didn't get to see your Alberta AF mud flaps that you put on this thing, Dylan. Big square redneck looking mud flaps on the back. I know they're functional and I know that you're trying to be courteous to the people behind you because you are like the nicest guy on YouTube, but uh, I think they look a little bit silly. But again, functional, okay, I get it. And also it's kind of a legality thing depending on where you live as well. So now that I'm done giving him a hard time, guys, go and follow Dylan at Loose Axles on YouTube. He's a fellow YouTuber with a fourth gen 4Runner. He has a whole bunch of really great 4Runner related content on here. Uh, both of us always get comments and DMs from people saying like, hey, do you know Tim? Do you know Dylan? We're friends. We talk to each other all the time on here. Dylan is a fantastic guy and he really does create a lot of high quality content for his YouTube channel and on his Instagram as well. So go ahead. I'll put a link down in the description to his YouTube and uh, I think he's sitting at close to 2,000 subscribers now and let's help him grow that channel. Uh, let's, let's try and blow it up as, as fast as we can, guys. Dylan, I'm going to give you a... Nine out of 10, but I'm gonna subtract one for the shout out that I just gave you. I feel like that's kind of like the least you can do is pay me back one point. So you're gonna get an eight out of 10 then. Moving on. Okay, next up we have Emilio. First impressions, the first thing that I noticed about this thing is that it looks very clean and very classy. So we've got two of my favorite things combined here, a black fourth gen facelifted one with the round fenders and a set of fifth gen TRD Pro wheels. That combination you just can't go wrong with. I think it always looks good. It just suits, these two things just suit each other so well. The headlights I'm not a big fan of. I'm seeing these aftermarket headlights with like the, kind of like the LED bar across the top. I do understand wanting to update the front end to a more modern headlight. And I definitely understand wanting to switch to black housing headlights because I can agree that the chrome on an otherwise dark styled Forerunner really stands out. So I get that. Um, I think maybe I'm just not quite sold on these aftermarket headlights just yet. Maybe they just need to grow on me. I don't know. The only other thing I'm seeing here is that you are notorious for leaving doors open. You got both the driver's door and the garage open. What are you doing, man? You're gonna get, <laughs> man, in my neighborhood, all your stuff's gonna be gone in 10 minutes. <laughs> We don't have a spoiler on the rear, which always looks a little bit awkward to me. I think the, the factory spoiler really adds a lot to the, the look of the fourth gen. And look at this trailer hitch. What is going on here? <laughs> is it like flipped up and then, man, that it looks like that trailer hitch is meant to tow something that this forerunner cannot tow. <laughs> Otherwise, I think this is a really clean, classy build. I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. All right, now we got Hunter. And it looks like an all stock Forerunner here. Uh, looks like an SR5. So this is like your entry level fourth gen, basically. This is about as, as inexpensive as you can get. And the thing is, these are still great Forerunners. I think whether you get a fully loaded limited or a bare bones one like this, they all are great kind of in their own way. Well, it looks like he's swapping coils over and he's got the cutting wheel out. All right, looks like we got some modifications done now at this point. And we got a nice rooftop tent up top there on the factory roof rack. Looks like it's lifting now as well. I think that previous picture looked like he was putting some old man emu suspension on it, judging by the bright yellow color. Let's go back and see here. Nitro charger, yep, old man emu. So we've got some things blacked out on the front here. We got some blacked out headlights, which is, I, I think, I still think looks wise, just painting the, the housings of the OEM lights is the best, the best look out of all the options. I have yet to see aftermarket headlights that look cleaner than the OEM ones just painted black. So I, I like that. Out here wheeling with his buddies, another scenic location for sure. And oh, this is cool, okay. Even if it's kind of uh, a roundabout way, we're getting some different generations of Forerunner here on uh, Rose My Runner finally. We got a really nice third gen that looks like it's kind of like just barely lifted, but um, it's got a, a nice tent and a light, lighting setup up top here. Uh, some ditch lights, looks like an aftermarket front bumper, got like 15 Raptor lights in the front grill because you got to do it. 
We got another one of my favorites, the TRD Off-Road package stickers on the side that were never on a Forerunner ever, but uh, putting a Tacoma sticker on there, I guess, makes sense. And then there's his Forerunner, and then it looks like we got a fifth gen following suit out back. And the fifth gen is kind of far off. I can't see too much about it, but it's got a pretty aggressive looking Viper cut on the front bumper. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. I get it for clearance and stuff. I understand the function of it. I think it looks a little bit goofy. But yeah, the fifth gen, from what I can see, looks pretty nicely outfitted as well. Here he is wheeling in the snow a little bit. Oh, okay, now we got the TRD Pro grill with some Raptor lights up top here. He's got a little toupee on his roof rack here for extra storage space. I've always wondered, do people do that for looks or do people actually need more storage space? There's plenty of storage in the hatch. I don't, I don't know. Also, what can you fit in those? Because they, they're so shallow, you know? Like, I, I guess clothes and stuff like that would fit in there. But I want to know, if you guys have one of those car hats, what are you putting there? I'm, I'm curious. I'm not judging. I'm, I'm just genuinely curious what goes in there. Uh, I'm starting to remember now in his email, he told me that the reason his front bumper is painted black and it kind of doesn't match the rest of the body is because I believe he smoked a deer. <laughs> and, and so rather than get it color matched to the factory red, uh, he just saved the money and made it black. And I guess he tied the grill in with it. He's got black wheels and again, the black accents of the SR5 model. I guess it kind of works. It gives it sort of like that, uh, that work truck look. We've got a rear shot here and another Forerunner that doesn't have a spoiler on the back. And I don't know, are you guys seeing that too? Because for me, it just looks a little bit awkward. I think it's, it's a little strange. Aftermarket taillights on here, again, are not my favorite. I think if you're gonna upgrade them, I think the factory LEDs are the best look if you have an older model, but yours actually came with factory LEDs. So I feel like that's kind of a lateral move to go from factory LED to aftermarket LED. That is a beautiful shot though, by the way. Look at the backdrop on that. Doesn't look like that here where I live, that's for sure. He uses this thing and that's nice to see. You're definitely gonna score points for getting out there on the trails. I do like the, the stance of this thing. Your wheel and tire setup looks pretty good. So I'm gonna give this a seven and a half out of 10. And we got a lot of seven out of 10 so far, I think. I gotta either be nicer or meaner. I'm not sure. Let's, <laughs> let's see what Jake's Forerunner has to say about that. Which direction are we steering? Looks like a, a pretty mild build here. I don't think this really counts as wheeling. This looks like he's like at a boat ramp or something. He found a hill that he can park on. But with that said, overall, this Forerunner, I think looks great. It, it looks like it's a sport edition based on the hood scoop. Okay, he's kind of wheeling here a little bit. We've got some LED pod fog lights here with the factory bezel. And I'm not sure what setup he's running, but I really like that. I wanna do that with my own actually. And I'm pretty sure Andrew at Trail Runner Customs is developing some right now. So uh, I've been following him on Instagram and he's been posting his story stuff about some new parts that he's developing for the Forerunners. I'm not sure which wheels they are. Are they method double standards? Cause it looks like a method center cap but there's more spokes than the standards like mine. I want to take a gamble and say those are double standards, but they look good. The, the stance of this Forerunner looks really good. What are those, 285s probably, I would assume. I still feel like this ride height with this tire size is still kind of the sweet spot. And I understand a lot of guys are going up to 35s and stuff. These aftermarket headlights, uh, I think I like them a little bit better than the previous ones that I talked about, but still they just don't really quite do it for me. I am gonna finish off with saying, first of all, Jake, you're gonna get an eight out of 10 for this one. And that comes along with an apology from me to all of the silver Forerunner owners that have been following Roast My Runner since episode one. I am sorry. <laughs> I've, I've gone on record saying time after time that I'm not a fan of silver Forerunners and I don't think it's a good looking color. And yet some of the recent submissions have caused me to do a 180. I am changing my mind. This is a prime example of what I think is a great looking silver forerunner. Follow Fraser, if you're watching, you got another great one too, buddy. Okay, next up we got John Bon Jovi, and it's interesting that he's driving a fourth gen forerunner. I thought he had way more money with his whole, you know, rock music career that he'd be driving something fancier. But uh, Bon Jovi, let's take a look at your forerunner. What do we got here? We've got a heritage style grill, TRD Pro style grill, whatever you want to call it. What do you refer to it as? Comment below, guys. Do you call it a Heritage Grill or a TRD Pro Grill? I'm curious to know what you think. Looks like we're really making the most of the stock bumper here. We've got a hidden winch and then also some cutouts for, it looks like some aftermarket pod lights here. That's not a bad idea. I think uh, if you don't have to run a front license plate, you've got that space there, why not use it? And that, that looks like a very clean install, if you ask me. 
Are these SCS wheels? I think what's going on here is this is an early model fourth gen that has the like the gray colored cladding normally, like the lower level ones. Um, and then it looks like he has painted or plasti dipped or vinyl wrapped. No, it's probably paint. It looks like it's like trim paint or something. He's painted it black. So in a roundabout way, he's taken a two-tone forerunner and made it all black, but it's not the same black. It's kind of, it's got some contrast to it because of the different textures and it's kind of a unique look. Got some steps on the side here. I'm not a fan of those. It always looks to me like you can just catch those on a rock and rip them right off. But um, I also have to remember that not everybody is over six feet and sometimes it's, it's required to get up into these lifted forerunners. So uh, I think that's a Gibson exhaust if I had to guess based on like the way that it sits with that the tip and everything on it. That tip, man, that looks, is it, is it touching the bumper? That's pretty close. You might want to adjust that a little bit because uh, that'll, that'll melt your plastic bumper, that's for sure. We got Icon suspension up front here. And anyways, it looks super clean in there. Even your fender liners and stuff, your, your splash shields look all clean and shiny. So I'm going to give you a seven and a half out of 10. Okay, up next we've got Mark. We've got some, oh, this is kind of a crappy picture here. I don't know, we've got some lighting. We've got some ditch lights. We've got some fog lights. It looks like there's a bull bar or something that those fog lights are mounted to. Heading into the back here, we've got the toe strap literally hanging off the hook here, just, just ready for action. Just like, somebody get stuck now! Merry Christmas. We, uh, we've got an exterior shot here. First of all, it looks like it's uh, pretty, pretty good condition. I think uh, the headlights aren't super faded. It looks like the OEM headlights. We've got a rocket launcher mounted to the roof rack here. Just kidding, I know it's probably fishing rods, whatever. Uh, what do we got down here? This is like a power station or something, it looks like. I don't know. Man, this guy really loves Christmas. He's got a <laughs> lit up Christmas tree on the roof and it's a pretty much stock forerunner, but it does look like it's in overall pretty good condition. I'm gonna give it a five out of 10. Up next, we have Sebastian. That's right, Sebastian, you're finally in Roast My Runner. You can rest easy now, okay? We'll get to that in a minute. Let's take a look at Sebastian's Forerunner here first. We, we got a <laughs> big, what do they call them? Striker front bumpers or something like that, like from the Jeep community, I think that's what they call them. I wouldn't want to get rear-ended by you, that's for sure. Uh, looks like we got an aftermarket roof rack up top here. I don't know what is going on with that hood scoop, dude. That's like, a, it's like a Compton Sport Edition. <laughs> yes, nailed it. I'm seeing it. There's like a, a meme online that is going around. They keep calling it a Whittle Wada. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know where that started or what it's all about or what the backstory is, but he's got a Whittle Wada on the back here. So it looks like we got some factory wheels that are painted with some beefy tires on here and it's obviously lifted. And we got some, some KC lights up on the roof rack up top here. Okay, we got another flex shot. I think it looks like there's some of these pictures are older from when he had more mild tires on it and then he. Uh, upgraded to something beefier in some of those other shots. You've got some some kind of stickers on the wind sh window here. I'm not really sure what that's all about. It looks like some kind of a vintage Toyota decal on the side, I guess. But yeah, I, I can't really tell much more about the setup on this thing. Yeah, see, again, he's got more aggressive tires on, on this picture. And then <laughs> there's the hood scoop again. <laughs> Oh cool, he's got a first gen buddy. Oh, what the, they got matching bumpers, guys. How cute is that? Matching bumpers. That's nice, it's good to have friends. It's a decent looking forerunner, I like it. Uh, I've got a few complaints, of course, or just things that aren't really my thing, but Sebastian, you're gonna lose points due to your impatience. Sebastian was just so excited to be on Roast My Runner that he just couldn't leave me alone. He emailed me his submission, and then he also sent me some pictures, he DM'd me some on Instagram. Then I guess I was taking too long, and he started all over. He says, my name is Sebastian, and I can send you more pictures of my rig and more, <laughs> more info if you want. So then I told him it should be in the next one and uh, he said sweet can't wait and he sent me <laughs> another email with, with more pictures so Sebastian buddy got to work on that patience man but anyways you're in Roast My Runner you made it you're on on the video and uh, I'm glad to have you here and I'm gonna give your forerunner Honestly, I was gonna deduct you some points for being impatient, but I feel like I just tore into you good enough on this video. So I'm just gonna give you an accurate, accurate rating of six and a half out of 10. All right, next we've got Vincent and oh we, okay, Vincent has a white fourth gen. You guys know how I feel. This is a sport edition. We've got the non-Compton hood scoop. This is the, the OEM Toyota hood scoop. Overall, great looking forerunner 
from this angle of what's going on here. It looks like the factory sport edition wheels painted black. Uh, sitting fairly tall on the front end. It's, I think it's sitting pretty level. I, I don't think it's taller in the front than the back. I think it's, it's pretty equal. I think uh, it's a good look actually. I, I like that stance. He's doing an online pickup for his order, I guess. There's also, I think if you squint, there's also a Forerunner in the background there. Uh, is that a dual tip Gibson exhaust? Like the slash cut dual tip option? I think it is. And I see a white fifth gen in the garage too. So we've got a Forerunner family. How do you not like that, right? Okay, he's got his Christmas jammies on and he's taking a picture at nighttime for us. What do we got going on with the uh, AMG lighting or Mercedes lighting? <laughs> it's, a, it's a forerunner, not a German luxury car, man. I don't know about that one. What, who's this? Who's this little guy? What's, what's the beaver's name? Yeah, Vincent, I'm going to give you a 8 out of 10 because it just looks really good, really clean, really simple. Final submission, we have Will, and it looks like this is another silver fourth gen, which now we know I'm okay with. First of all, this is a beautiful picture. We've got a really nice looking sky, sunset. I like it. We've got the aftermarket headlights again. Not a fan. Sport edition hood scoop, big fan. Oh, okay. Will is a dog. I don't know what I'm more impressed by, that the dog can drive or the dog can email a submission into me. Either way, very impressive. Okay, side shot here. It looks really clean. It looks really well cared for. And uh, I think these are, I think you mentioned that these are American racing wheels. You know what they remind me of? The, you know the spoon wheels that everybody puts on the Hondas? Like the SW something, I can't remember the model name, but it, they were huge back in the day. Kind of reminds me of those. It's like a truck version of those spoon wheels. But yeah, I don't necessarily have a problem with running American racing wheels on your Forerunner. I, th I think they look pretty decent. It's maybe not my first choice in terms of styling, but there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, yeah, great looking forerunner. From this angle, looks like a decent size lift with the suspension set up. We've got some ditch lights. Well, we got some vinyl on the hood scoop. I don't know, I think maybe that wasn't the move. I would have just left that alone, I think. But uh, another side shot showing the stance. Looks fairly level. I think I gotta give it a 7 out of 10. There's, man, there's a lot of 7 out of 10s on this episode. But, but that's all I got for this one, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. See you.